I want to introduce our pastor, Dan Daniels, to come and share with us. Well, welcome everybody to a new year, 2020. 2020. Uh, we survived uh, 2020, now 2021. 2021. So welcome to a new year of 2021. Let me open up with a, a word of prayer. Father, we come and we thank you for this time. We thank you for this worship that we have as we begin a whole new year, 2021, as we start. Father, we thank you that your presence is with us. We thank you. We lift up and pray for our nation as a crucial week is ahead of us in many, many areas. But we thank you that no matter what happens, Politically, governmentally, otherwise, economically, in every way, Jesus Christ, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we stand upon you. We stand upon your promises. And so we look today to worship you anew and afresh on the first Sunday of 2021. We give you glory and praise. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I want to welcome you. And we just give God. Praise, we give God glory. It's just so wonderful that we can we can know that He is with us no matter what goes on. And aren't you glad that 2020 is over? And now it's 2021. Amen. And old brand new. So I want to wish you officially Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New Year. I also want to give thanks to uh, those that have removed uh, our Christmas decoration and trees and lights and everything else. And uh, I'm so grateful for all those that work and serve and uh, take care of things for us. I'm so blessed as a pastor that uh, we have people that love the Lord and serve Him in our congregation. So with that, with that in mind, I just want to remind you, Wednesday night, 6.30, California time, Pacific Standard Time. For those of you watching in Africa, Australia, up and down the state, across America, everywhere, Pecos, maybe in South America, and Paraguay, God bless you all. Uh, we'll be having Bible study, and that's uh, Wednesday, 6.30 California time. So we want to go ahead and continue and, uh, as you worship uh, there at the kitchen tabletop, maybe living room or bedroom or viewing with us, we welcome, we welcome you. We've had as many as three to four to five thousand people view us on a Sunday morning through the digital, through the internet. And man, I'm a digital immigrant, I don't understand it, but it's such a blessing. It's such a, a blessing to uh, expand. And or even our Wednesday Bible study, we have like two to three thousand uh, Viewing and so if you're viewing, just please say it. If you're viewing, it, it encourages us and blesses us. And I'm thankful and grateful for all that God is doing. I'm thankful and grateful for Greg Boudin as he leads in worship. Thankful for our video uh, crew. Thankful for Audrey playing on the piano. So Greg, you come and lead us in uh, worship. And I have a message this morning that God gave me that I feel is apropos to bring 2020 to a close and to look forward in 2021. Just a, a promise from Jesus Christ that is so apropos or appropriate to our circumstance and situation. We're not under the circumstances. We're above the circumstances because of Jesus Christ. Amen. We recognize them. We are careful but not fearful. And we anticipate God blessing us in some great and brand new ways in the new year of 2021. And once again, Happy New Year. Amen. We read in Ephesians 2 8, for by grace we have been saved. And that's why we enjoy so much singing the song or songs as it may be that have amazing grace.
This is the time we come to worship. We hear that amen because we're here. We expect to see God on Pastor says. So let's sing. Come, now is the time to worship.
idea of, of rest. Come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Yoke was simply an instrument often made of wood with a metal hanger down that you would connect two cows, two bulls, two pieces of burden together to plow. Connection. A yoke. A connection. And so I'll look into this and deep dive and kind of dig in. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest in your soul. I want you to notice in verse 28 and 29 the double rest. First there's a physical rest. Resting. We get tired. Uh, anybody here that's been tired of 2020? Is tired of all the stuff, tired of all the bad news, tired of all the craziness of tired. There's that physical tiredness, but there's also a weary soul, emotional tiredness. And we have rest here for both. Verse 28 ends, I will give you rest. Verse 29 ends, rest for your souls. We can easily deal with physical tiredness and physical rest and things. The struggle often is that emotional rest, that spiritual rest, that, that inner type thing. Uh, Jesus said, take my yoke upon you, connect with me, partner with me, participate with me, hook up with me. I will give rest for your souls. And then verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Father, I pray that you would bless the preaching of your word here. I pray that you would speak to our hearts and give us encouragement as with it being a new year, 2021, we sense and feel a newness and a freshness and in many ways a new beginning and start up some new good habits and put 2020 and everything all behind us and look forward, yoke with you to move ahead. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, I want to focus on rest, and uh, the uh, title of my message this morning is Permission or Intermission. Uh, you know, I didn't steal that from another preacher, only I, weird as I can be, to think of something like that. Permission or Intermission. I remember the boy going to the movies, and you go to the movies, and uh, you would get two shows. You did get two movies. And uh, then also, several times, watching the movie and the so-called picture show, you would have intermission. And you would have, you know, five, ten minute intermission. And then that was where you get more popcorn, you get more candy, uh, you know, take care of some personal business and, and whatnot. Intermission. Well, here, Jesus Christ gives us permission for intermission with all the stuff that's going on. The focus is rest. A good word for, for 2020. This is a great soothing promise to a groaning world that was 2020. I'm glad it's behind it. I, I'm not going to give any political commentary this morning or any medical advice about, about the virus. But, man, it was a crazy year last year. I don't have to tell you, you lived through it. And I'm hearing commentators saying it's going to be worse or just the same or whatnot. Well, the only thing that's the same is Jesus Christ. Amen. Who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's word changes not. Amen. It is the same. The constant, confident trust. <coughs> Excuse me, that we have in Him. So there's permission for intermission. Now, we as believers always think that we have to constantly, constantly be busy and constantly serve the Lord, and, and we can't take a break. But God told us that uh, we need to come apart and rest a while. He tells us that come apart and rest a while. In oh, uh, Mark, here in Matthew, He says, "Come to Me." All you that are weary and laboring, heavy laden, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. And we need to put 
2022 rest, and now it's 2021. So uh, there's four things, four actions that we can we can take uh, for the year 2021 uh, that uh, we need to continue that I see in this little passage of scripture. By the way, this uh, is one of the most popular, most well-known uh, verses. Come unto me, you that are labor, heavy laden, and find rest. Take my yoke upon you. Partnership, participation with the things of God. First thing, number one, respond to Christ's promise. All these four will, will begin with the letter R. Respond. Christ's promise. Verse 20, come unto me. Come unto me. <coughs> it's he himself that we partner with and book up with and come to him. He is the answer. He is the hope. Respond. Respond to Christ's promise and his invitation to come to him. Second, Redirect your thinking, and this is very important. Redirect your thinking. Notice Jesus said, Learn of me, take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. Redirect your thinking. And uh, by the way, uh, this talks about us being a disciple. A disciple. Redirect your thinking, learn of me. Learn from me to be a disciple. The word disciple in the Greek New Testament is the word mathetes, M A T H, like math, so it doesn't have anything to do with numbers, and then E T E S, mathetes. That's what the word disciple is in, translated from the, the, the Greek. And the word mathetes is, it literally means a learner, a, a learner. So one thing about the Christian life and the Christian walk is that we never become know-it-alls. We never become, you know, don't you just love being around a know-it-all that knows everything and you can never teach them anything or that, you know, they, they know it all. They, 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 they know it all. Well, we've got a lot to learn. We always have a lot to learn. And by the way, when you learn, the more you learn, the more you learn, then you need to learn more. So we see that we need to respond to Christ's promise. Come to Him. Your direction. Redirect your thinking. Learn of Him. A disciple. The word disciple, the pites. A disciple is a learner of the things of Christ. And you have to work in learning. You have to study, you have to know the Word of God, be around other Christians, uh, just as I, when I was a young pastor, learned and looked up to older pastors, we looked at the mature Christians and learned from them. We learned from our experience, but redirect your thinking, Jesus said, learn from me. It also in the Greek to mean learn of me. In other words, not just learning facts about Christ, facts about Christian living, but learning Him. Learning and knowing Him. Now, one of my favorite actors of all time uh, was uh, Spencer Tracy. He won two Academy Awards, Oscars two years in a row. Great, you know, actor. And, and uh, I don't know why, but that's my favorite actor and, and things. And, uh, you know, but I, I know of him, but I never met him. And uh, read a biography of him, but I didn't know him personally. Well, we can know Jesus Christ. We can know about him and read about him in the Gospels, in the Word. But we can also know him. We can have a relationship with him. Amen. And even though I was a fan of Spencer Tracy and those of you at a certain age and above, that will ring a bell. Okay? Others of you younger, who, who that? Who that? Uh, who allegedly one of the greatest actors on the MGM, you know, role of actors and things. Uh, respond to Christ's promise. 
redirect your thinking. Learn of Him. Not just learn about Him, but learn Him in relationship with Him, who He is as He redirects our thinking. The Bible says that we have the mind of Christ in the book of Hebrews 13. And one of the things about being a believer and being a Christian is that our mind and our thought life and our thinking change. Our thinking is different. He redirects our thinking. So number one, respond to Christ's promise. Come to me. Come to me. Take my yoke upon you. My burden is light. Hook up. Look up. And took up or take up the cross of Christ. Linking with him. We need this in 2021. So this whole message is an encouragement and a touch point for the new year of 2021. I don't know if things are going to get better, if things are going to get worse, this, that, whatnot, perhaps this week. I believe it's, it's Wednesday, whatever political resolve or craziness or anything can happen. Uh, wouldn't you agree with me that everything in the last year has been so totally unpredictable? One of the strangest, weirdest, craziest years in all kinds of ways we've ever, ever had. And so we need to look and focus upon God, focus and look upon Jesus Christ, trust in His Word as we respond to His promise to come to Him. To come to Him. Redirect our thinking, as it says in verse 29, and learn of Him. Learn from Him. He is our teacher. He is actually, He is also called in John chapter 14, 15, 16, teacher. They call Him teacher. The funny thing is, is when I finished high school and got my diploma mailed to me, I got my diploma in the mail because the last two weeks of high school and my senior year, I got expelled. Now, I've been suspended a bunch of times before, the rebellion and causing trouble and this and that and, and, and whatnot. And then finally, I got expelled in my senior year, two, two weeks before graduation. I got expelled, got called into the principal's office, and the dean of voice, the senior counselor, and the principal, Dr. James Crawford, uh, had me in, they had a little tribunal and all this and that, and they said, uh, the principal, Mr. Crawford, finally says, Danny, you are expelled from this school. And uh, I, he uh, said that we are going to mail you your high school diploma. You are not allowed to go to our graduation. You're expelled. Now, you got to be a real doofus to be expelled two weeks before graduation in your senior year of high school. They could have made one of those crazy movies about that. And so uh, he said, well, man, you can hear the diploma. Now get out of here. And I didn't care, you know. I, and so when I, got, when I got to the door, I turned back and I said, don't worry. Mr. Crawford, I'm joining the Marines. I'm joining the Marines. <laughs> and and uh, uh, actually, a confession for all you Marines. Uh, I originally wanted to go to the Navy. I was on huh? the Navy recruiter. Joined the Navy, went into the Navy recruiter, and I was given the list, and my dream and goal was to be on an aircraft carrier. I mean, that was the deal, to be on an aircraft carrier be in the Navy, and then get into bar fights in Hong Kong with drunken sailors. Now, that, was, that was my goal as an 18-year-old, get drunk and get in fights in bars in Hong Kong. <laughs> that was it. That was, that was it. I mean, man, what a piece of work. Praise God for what he's done in my life. Amen. So I got there, and the recruiter said, sorry, uh, there's a waiting list. It's about a three-month waiting list. I, I can put your name on the waiting list. And I said, I said, okay. Uh, as I left the Navy recruiter's office there in San Jose by the city center building, they had a federal building, a city, and in there they had the recruiter. And now I'm in the hallway 
Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, recruiter, you know, like a thing. You know, or eating at, you know, Joe's Pick or Rib Barbecue, we can pick. And so I signed up, got on the waiting list, and uh, uh, about a month, a month into it, I got a, a letter uh, from the government. And it said that I was drafted into the United States Army, and I was to report in about 10 days. And uh, my training would be at Fort Ord in Monterey, which was close to San Jose. And uh, I didn't want to go to the Army. I wanted to go to the Navy. I wanted to get in bar fights in Hong Kong and stuff like that in the Navy. Like I saw in those Clark Gable, Spencer Tracy movies. You know what I mean? I mean, talk about an idiot. I mean, man. <coughs> so when I got my draft notice, I Soon as I got through the mail, I drove over to the Navy recruiter, showed him my draft notes, and when I was supposed to report for the Armed Forces Examination Center and things, and then uh, I, I asked, I said, can, can, can I go to the Navy? And he says, there's nothing we can do. He says, you, you, you have to wait. You're on a waiting list. There's nothing we can do. And he said, but, Right next door is the recruiting uh, office of the, of the United States Marine Corps, and the United States Marine Corps is uh, part of the Navy. Uh, you can join uh, and list there. And then he said, as I walked out the door, headed towards the Marine Corps recruiter, he said, uh, uh, by the way, there's no waiting list for the Marine Corps recruiter. <laughs> right. So I went to the Marine Corps recruiter, and uh, I was, you know, desperate to sign up. And, and you know, the recruiter, being the wise Marine, I, he says, "What are you hiding? What are you running from?" And I said, "Nothing." And I said, "The problem is, is I got my draft notice, and I wanted to go to the Navy." And so, you know, to make a long story short, they took me. I passed the physical. Three days later, I was standing upon yellow footprints there in San Diego. Our, our own Victor Ferris is very familiar with that. New Rock. The commanding officer of the boot camp uh, captain uh, uh, there. And so, you know, there, there, there I am, you know, boot camp. And uh, there it is. And, uh, well, we didn't have any rest, I can guarantee you that. We, we are standing here. We're to come unto Christ, all that are weary and, and heavy laden, and he will give us rest. We take our yoke and learn from him. He is gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In other words, respond to Christ's promise. Second, redirect your thinking. Learn of Him. That's discipleship. Learn of Him. We constantly grow and we never arrive. Third, resolve to serve Him. Take His yoke upon us. Take His yoke upon us. And the fourth thing is reinvest your life in Him. Verse 30, the yoke is easy. The burden is light. Serve Him and live for him. So I challenge all of us that in the year 2021, in the year 2021, that we pick up that burden, that we yoke with Christ, that we walk with him, we serve him, and that we will find rest for our souls. This picture, our salvation, our surrender, and our service. This verse pictures our salvation, our surrender to Him, and our service. Hook up, look up, and Christ took up the cross for us. So, just some applications here. How we can be yoked and yielded to Christ in the year 2021. How we can be yoked and yielded. First thing, when you yoke two pieces of burdens or two cows or two water buffaloes together in a yoke, they're yoked together. First of all, they're connected. We have a connection with Christ. Amen. 
Second thing about being yoked up is those beasts of burden yoked up are both going in the same direction with the same purpose. And we yoked up, hooked up, booked up, looking up with Christ are going in the same direction with the same job, the same duty, the same purpose. What is this uh, in verse 29? Take my yoke upon you. What, what was that yoke? Well, it was, a, it was often a wooden bar with a metal hook that, that harnessed to the neck to put together a pair of oxen to work often to plow and use their strength and, and energy. Uh, a yoke was that wooden bar that hooks up uh, Another thing that a yoke did is it would train the younger oxen and to be yoking them up for them to be ready to do the big plowing. It talks about maturation. And by the way, when we accept Jesus Christ, when we accept Jesus Christ, we are spiritual babies. All of you at one time or another have experienced the joy of a newborn baby, maybe the first time you held your child or the wonderful day when you brought your child home from the hospital and uh, there's there's that child and, uh, uh, you know, you, you train them and then there's that connection, that, that connectedness with that child, that hookup. Well, it's the same way that God the Father, God the Father yokes us up to him. We're, we're harnessed with God for the harvest. That harness works in the area also of the oxen of teamwork going in the same direction. 2021 may be a year that we are going in the direction that God wants us to go. The direction for his plan. The direction for his glory, the direction as we are yoked and yielded, yoked and yielded as we take up that you know, we, we hook up, yielded to the eternal cross. This talks about maturation, maturation. As I alluded earlier, we love the little babies that they grow up and they mature and become adults and reproductive. And we in our Christian walk start out as babies, but we grow and then we become reproductive. We, we grow up in Him. We are yoked and yielded to Christ. We are yoked and yielded to Christ. We hook up and then we look up. That's the word of God. That's the word, this is where we feed, we grow, we, we nourish, we, we learn. And the amazing thing about this book is that the more you learn of it, the more you realize what you don't know. And you continue to learn of it, and God shows us things, and, and we learn. And also there's this idea of graduating, that you're ready to learn the next thing. You're ready to learn more, ready to receive. So I challenge you. I challenge you as one application from this message. It's only the 3rd of January. I challenge you that if you've never read the Bible from cover to cover, that we love to read the Beatitudes, the book of John. Uh, sometimes we tackle the book of Revelation and you look at the book and chapter. We read the Psalms and things. We commit to read through the Bible. We get through Genesis, wonderful. We get through Exodus, wonderful. And then comes Leviticus. Uh, hey, so I've gone through, there, there's truth. But I challenge you in the year 2021, not as a resolution, but as our spiritual revolution, to read the Bible through from cover to cover. Amen. Now, I, I, I don't, I've only read it 77 times. I'm ashamed of that. It should be 100. Uh, but I, I read it through, and I started already at Genesis 20, I read Genesis 28 this morning uh, to read through the 78th time. And when I hit, finished Revelation, start back, you there, read the Bible two or three times 
through the year. Sometimes it will pull you one in the year when I want to go a little deeper and slower. I don't speed read, I take notes, I got journals and write stuff down, and it's a real blessing. It's a real blessing. You will grow, glow, and go for God if you make that a goal. So I challenge you to make it a goal, to read the Bible through from cover to cover. If that's too much, then just the New Testament, 270 chapters, just the New Testament. But I challenge you that 2020 be a year of spiritual growth, of time as you go through the Word of God, but better yet, the Word of God goes through you. That's the key. That the Word of God goes through you. That we know it, we stow it, and then we live it out. We know it, stow it, and show it. And then we glow. Let the light of Christ shine out through us. So what to do in the year 2021? Respond to Christ's promise. Come to me. Come to me. He says, come to me. All you who are weary and heavy laden. Now, if you thought you were weary and heavy laden in the year 2020, there will be times in 2021 that you'll be heavy, heavy laden, and weary, and tired. Come to Christ. Respond to his promise. Redirect your thinking. Learn of him. He said, learn of me. Learn of of me. Not only learn about him, but learn of him. Learn from him. Learn from him. I challenge you. I challenge you to learn more and more about Christ. One of the things I've discovered is that the more you know the scripture, the more you discover, there's more you need to know. Amen. It's inexhaustible. It's inexhaustible. Resolve to serve him. That's what I say. Look at verse 29. Take my yoke upon you. I remember that yoke that the two cows, the two buffaloes, the, the, the two animals, the cattle, uh, working together. Resolve to serve him. Let 2021 be a year that you serve him. By the way, are you aware that there's something for the Lord that only you can do and nobody else can do? There's something that God can use you for to touch lives, to build His word, bless families, or what, uh, that only you can do and nobody can do. God made us so unique. I mean, it's just incredible as, as you study about how unique in you know, our DNA and this and, and, and all that. Uh, resolve to serve Him, take His yoke, hook up with Him. You know, the year. 2020 was a year of shaking in many ways. Like Elf was saying, what did he say? I'm all shook up. I'm all shook up. Well, it was a year of shaking. But when we get shook up, we need to look up and then hook up. Look up. Hook up. When we get Sure, yeah. But I would imagine there will be some situations in the year 2021 in our body politic and in our nation. Uh, there's going to be some shaking. Another 1950s rock guy, Jerry Lee Lewis, sitting at that piano, doing the boogie woogie and singing. A whole lot of shaking going on. And I'm not just talking about Southern California earthquakes. But to be shaken by God in our hearts to honor and glorify we might see this week Wednesday some form of, of shaking of some kind in the body politic but just remember this no matter what happens no matter who wins no matter who loses Jesus Christ is still King of Kings and Lord of Lords he is on the throne he is in control and all this stuff is temporary comes and goes Jesus Christ is always the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. We have that one foundation, the written Word of God. Jesus Christ is the living Word of God. Our words, our prayers, our testimony, our witnessing, our sharing is the spoken Word of God. Amen. Respond to Christ's promise. Come to Him. 
I heard a lot of pastors and preachers preach last year about how this is in the book of Revelation and the loosing of the locusts and the demons and this and, and that. I, I don't know 100% all, all, about, all about that. I just know one thing, that we need Jesus Christ. Whether it's a good year or a bad year, we need Jesus Christ. Whether it was 2020 or you know, 1980, whatever, we need Christ and we need to be linked to him. We need to go with him as the two cows, as the two bulls, as the two water buffaloes in Asia, do a yoke or link together, going number one in the same direction. So, application, I challenge you in 2021 to go in the direction that God is leading you. To go with God step by step, step for step to, to go. So, when you're hooked and, and harnessed, when you're on that yoke with Christ, there's teamwork, there's partnership. Uh, first of all, there's work to be done, step by step. The idea is there is the plowing and the harvesting of bringing souls, of glorifying Christ, accomplishing something, bringing fruitfulness. So I would pray that year 2020 be one of your most, if not most, fruitful years in your life. Fruitful, spiritually. Fruitful financially, fruitful family-wise, with your family that's above you, parents, grandparents, family down from you, children, great-grandchildren, grandchildren, that there be this fruitfulness, fruitfulness. We look here, that as I wrap this up, as we, we look at some applications, number one, in the year 2021, strive to be yoked and yielded to God. Now, I know you made the first steps in 2021 because you're in God's house. You're in God's church and you're watching at home. You're, you're watching at home and you're worshiping, beginning the new year on the first Lord's Day of 2021, worshiping God in His Word, applying His Word. So, I just uh, challenge you to be yielded and yoked. To be yielded and yoked. Our salvation, our surrender, and our service. Because when the two cows, or the two buffalo, or the two water buffaloes, or the two beasts of birds were yoked together, they weren't yoked together just for the sake of being yoked. They were yoked together for the harvest. To plow unplowed ground. For planting and seeding and yielding and harvesting. And I pray that the year 2021 be a year of planting and seeding and harvesting and the result, fruitfulness. Fruit. Galatians 5 22 23 talks about the fruit of the Spirit love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, temperance, peace. You mean we can have all that in spite of the craziness going on? You know, what's next? Well, there's going to be perhaps some kind of a showdown politically this Wednesday. It's Tuesday and Wednesday. No matter what, Jesus Christ is Lord and King of Kings. Amen. Applications to live out. Two things uh, ahead of that is our connection and correction with Christ. We have a connection as we live with him, as we are yoked with him. There's that connection, and then there's always a correction. God is teaching us to become more and more Christ-like, correcting our steps, leading our steps. And perhaps in the year 2020, he made some mistakes. Well, he can correct them. And I'll make the same mistake again. It's a newness, in our, that's the one thing that we all like about New Year's, that, that we always feel a sense of newness and a new beginning, and we make all these plans. We might even make a list of stuff, you know, for the, for the year and, and things. And above all, uh, do this, and it's not too late even yet to start, is a goal to read through the Bible from cover to cover, or at least the New Testament, 270 chapters. Chapter and day, right? you should easily do it in a year. Bible, full 1,000, 
139 chapters. Three a day, five by Sunday, will get you through the whole. That's how I started the first time I read through the Bible. First time I started, love reading through the book of Genesis. Exodus, okay, you know, last half, little this. And then I dropped out and quit at Leviticus. You know, quit at Leviticus. Don't quit at Leviticus. And that's the problem. Do this. Read the other 65 books of the Bible, and then the last book, read Leviticus, and you'll be motivated because then you'll have read the whole Bible from cover to cover. I like to use a study Bible that has some guides and footnotes at the bottom. I, for years, I've always used a Ryrie study Bible. He was a professor at the Dallas Theological Seminary. I write the outlines and the footnotes. I cut my eye teeth first as a new believer on the Schofield Reference Bible. Now, that's a challenge for a brand new believer. That I have a Schofield Reference Bible, I look at his notes and outline, and I rarely preach this stuff. It's for my own edification. And because it's for my own edification, I am equipped to look at Scripture and have something new and, and something fresh. So, in the year 2021, Jesus says, Come to me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Learn me. Learn me. I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Verse 30. Respond to Christ's promise. Come to me. If you've never trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, I challenge you to make that decision. These crazy times call for it more than any other times that we've known. Respond to Christ's promise, come to me. Redirect your thinking. Redirect your thinking. Verse 29, learn. Learn from me. Uh, that word learn uh, is linked to the word disciple. Make an effort to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And what does the word disciple mean? It comes from the Greek word matite, just like the word math, M-A-T-H, and E-T-E, matite. Matite means to be three things, a learner, a follower, and an imitator. So we learn of Christ by reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Scriptures. The book of Revelation is all about Christ in chapter 2 and 3, Him speaking, and His glory, and His return, and the glory of His kingdom. Learn of Him, learn about Him. Memorize Scripture in your New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, that are in red. The very words of Christ. In fact, Matthew 11, 28 through 30, three verses. I challenge you, let this be the first memory verse for the year 2021. And if it takes all month, January, to learn it, it's worth it. It will transform your life. It'll bring peace of soul into your, into your mind and into your heart. Respond to Christ's promise. Come to Him. Come to Him. Link to Christ personally. Hook up, book up, and then look up. Looking at Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Harness to the harvest of Jesus Christ. Well, I'm just about out of time, so I just want to give you a couple of things to, to chomp on for the rest of uh, this year. We see in this our salvation. We see our surrender. And then we see Service. I started out as the title of my message, Permission for Intermission, to rest, to take a break. You know, uh, we're upon the uh, football season. It's weird to watch an NFL game to empty stadiums. Uh, it's kind of strange and, and things and, and, and all that. Uh, but as any good athlete knows, uh, no matter what sport you're in, you know you need some time out and rest. So what I'm talking about this morning is permission for intermission. Jesus said, rest. Come to me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You will find rest for your soul. Physical rest, spiritual rest.
spiritual rest, emotional rest, rest in Him. We, we see that uh, we yield ourselves, yielded, respond, redirect, resolve, reinvest your life in Him. And so what we do is three things. Live to Christ personally. Do you know Him as your personal Lord and Savior? Have you taken Jesus out of the Bible and through praying a prayer, the sinner's prayer, they call it, to ask Christ to come into your life? I can't think of a better way to start a new year than if you've never trusted Christ for your salvation to ask Christ to come into your heart. A prayer like this, dear God, I confess I'm a sinner. I confess my sin. Forgive me. Come into my life. I thank you that you died on the cross for me. I thank you that you rose from the dead and that you're alive. I want to live for you. Thank you. I pray it in Jesus' name. Here's where we get the rest. Here's where we get rest. Rest in him. That's why I said, hook up. Book up. And look up. Looking at Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. When we're weighted down, when we're carrying this burden and we're weighted down, we need to look at Jesus Christ. The one certainty in a year of uncertainties. The certainty of all certainties. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Out of 7,132 promises in the Bible, they're all great, but that's one of the greatest ones that impacts us personally. We hook up yoked to the eternal Christ. Hook up and yoked. We are corrected and connected with Him as we hook up, book up, and look up. We have permission for intermission. And then we have ignition. All of our automobiles have uh, ignition. What this does, it gets us going, it gets us started. Back when they used to do the Apollo space launches and the Mercury space launch, remember the Gemini space launches, as they would do the countdown, the word was ignition. Ignition. What God is saying to us today for the year 2021 is launch, ignition, hook up, book up, look up, yes, permission for intermission, rest, regroup, recalibrate, but next is ignition. Get fired up in the year 2021 for Jesus Christ. Ignition! And I'm hoping and praying that my preaching and messages will ignite us. Put us, our hearts on fire for Jesus Christ. That we can be a shining testimony and a light. We get to hook up to the eternal Christ. Last of all, as I, as I wrap this up, we can harness for the harvest. I pray that year 2021 will be a year of fruitfulness and a year of harvest. Fruitfulness in the life of us individually, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, other fruit of converts, people coming to Christ. We have this fruitfulness and connectedness that the year 2021 be a year that we walk in Christ. As I take time to have us pray, and Greg will come lead us in a song. I just thank you that I had the privilege these last years. Uh, today is my 228th Sunday at Arbor Christian Fellowship. They divide it up by 52, it comes to 4.2 years or something that, that I've been here. I'm grateful and thankful that I pastor of this great people, this great church, great people, wonderful people. Every one of you are okay and all right. Every one of you are loved. And I'm so blessed 
to be associated with you, a bit of to be your pastor, and to be your shepherd. Now, I may not be the greatest shepherd in the world, but I'm an under-shepherd, the greatest shepherd of all. That's why it says here, come unto me, yoke with me, yoke with the shepherd. So I challenge you to hook up, book up, and look up in the year 2021. Let's, let's pray as Greg will kind of lead us in a closing song. Father, I just thank you. And Lord, my words and my thoughts are totally inadequate to capture the truth of this passage that, Lord, there's been out there that we can see and understand and know. So I pray that we will come to you this year and all the time, keep coming and coming to you. Lord, that we would look up, look up and, and look up. We would yoke up. And Lord, we would go through the plowing harvest fields together as you pull us. Lord, we need your pull, your touch, your strength. So I pray in Jesus' name.